Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another Shoe Snob Blog unboxing video series, One Take Wonders. Here we are with not something new, but something you've seen before and an updated version. All right, well, let's jump straight into this as time is of the essence. Here we are back again with another pair from Bridland. So I unboxed several pairs from Bridland, uh, I don't know, a year ago or thereabouts. And I had some critiques, comments about the quality, what not not necessarily the quality because the shoes were really well made just some detailing aspects I thought could be approved upon and they said they worked on those sent another pair and one of the feedback so here we are let's take a look uh, <clears throat> Justin I don't know if they they're just personalizing the stickers here you can see it's paper cut out uh, I don't really care about this. I know some people judge. It's not, uh, you know, stamped in a in a printer who prints stickers. You know, this is cut by hand, so it's handmade right there. Style wingtip Oxford color dark snuff size 6.5 Goodyear welted last zip. Bridland.com. All right, let's take a look. I will say, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but Bridlin has, in my opinion, some of the best packaging on the market. I mean, they make sure their shoes are nice and secure, which is important. I've learned the hard way, not properly secured a pair, ruin the shine, the shine comes cracked, the client thinks that the shoe's broken and blah, 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 and it's important to pack it well. So, shoehorn, very curious shape here, uh, but yeah. Laces, I've shown you all this, but anyway, nice bags. Again, bag, plastic, smart. Always good to protect your shoes because in reality, your shoes are judged immediately once they get pulled out of that box. So the more protected and pristine they are, the better. All right, well, this will be a shorter video as we're just going to talk about the critiques. If you want to hear about the quality, listen to my original unboxings, which I'll leave in the link below. The quality is fantastic, especially for the price. So there were some things that I mentioned in the previous video. So let's take a look at them. Um, all right. So. Hmm. All right, well, <clears throat> there were a couple things like the heel. For me, the heel has a very strange shape. It's like angled, not rounded. It's like round and then like a black diamond on the, on the ski resort. Very sharp angle as opposed to your typical round. Uh, and yeah. It doesn't seem, it, it might have changed a little bit, but it still has that cut, um, you know, which is is what it is. I, I just find it a bit funny looking. Uh, I did mention that I felt something strange in my heel arch area. And and I talked about it being, I think, the, the sh shortness uh, of the arch. And I won't lie, I still feel it, but I, th I, I know they've adjusted and it feels better, but I still feel that. And I don't feel that in other shoes where I like feel the arch hitting kind of back towards my uh, heel spur bone, my, my whatever. So like, you know, your, your arch here, your heels here, and I feel something here. And uh, I felt that in other shoes in the past and, and I personally believe that has something to do with the last and where it sits and there could be other things, but they've made it better. I've had other people say they wore Bridlin and they don't feel it. Again, like I said, everything is subjective. So I do, uh, maybe not everybody will feel this, but some of you will. For me, it's, um, it's not comfortable. I can't wear shoes that have that. Uh, this is definitely better. This feels nicer. I put them on, they feel good. It's still slightly there, but not nearly as much as the first pairs. First pairs, I wouldn't be able to wear at all. Uh, the toe 
coming over the wealth was something I uh, discussed with them, which for me is just a very horrible look, a sign of, in my opinion, cheap making. Now, they did fix this, thankfully. Now, I still, you can still see that the last has this really big, they have a big like, I don't know how to describe this because this is not necessarily my expertise. I, I know it, I see it, but I don't know the technical details of this. But the way the lasts are, the, you, you see the underside of the last, which you, you shouldn't in, uh, you shouldn't so much in other shoes. You know, the space between the last uh, here and the welt should be very small. Um, not like flush because that's not how welted shoes are but this is quite a large gap i see they don't have it sticking over the the welt which is a terrible look you can now see the profile which is great i think that was a vast improvement um and so but i still think this should be closed a little bit more there's a lot of under undertow here in the last which creates quite a large space and i think it it, that also makes it easier for water to seep into. So something to think about. Um, I said that the balance on the pattern wasn't quite there, but this is perfect. Whatever they did on this pattern is great. All the lines fall into the right spot wonderfully, which for me is huge because I'm a design guy. So design, the pattern on the last is for me what I, you know, I just did a podcast about what is the best and the, for me, the best shoemakers. I don't care about the detailing, the finishing. I care about how well they put that pattern on that design because no matter how beautiful a shoe is made, if the pattern on the last is ugly, that shoe is worthless in my opinion. So um, one thing I am noticing, which I don't recall in the first pairs, which is very weird, is like a, a convex uh, shape on the forefoot. Now that is not normal. That should be, you know, more flat. Uh, you can have a little bit of a hump here, um, you know, just to give you that kind of spring so you're not like, I don't know how to describe it, but just so you're not like hitting your toe when you walk, a little bit of shape, but it, it should really be right in this area, which is where you create your kind of uh, rocking motion but not so much extended into the forefoot, which I don't know if they're putting too much cork or what, but that should be flattened out. You know, when you're making bespoke shoes, you spend a lot of time hammering, 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 hammering all that out so you get a nice, beautiful, smooth line. So when you look at it like this, or like this, you don't see this little hill on your shoe. It's like, anyway, uh, in all honesty, this is not to say Britland's not making great shoes. They are. I just, you know, I still think, I think this line is a strange line. You know, again, heel should be curved, not, not, uh, not with this really sharp angle, in my opinion. It's, it's, uh, for me, it's not a good look. Uh, fixing that was crucial. Uh, I still think they can make that a little bit tighter so that you don't really see the bottom of the last so much. Uh, pattern is perfect now. Fit is much better. The arch is not really bothering me like it was. It's a very solid shoe. And for the price, I, I don't know what they are, 300 or something. It's a, it's a great, it's a solid. You feel the quality when you put them on. Again, these critiques I know because Brindlin is eager to do better, eager to make great shoes. And the owners are great guys. And I know they listen to this and say, how can we do better? And I appreciate that about them. Shoes, fantastic. Great value for money, good quality, nice material, high quality materials, great shoe for the price, great owners at the top, great people to work with, nice people, always good to support nice people, good to see them trying. The crazy thing is, I was just with them at my New York Super Trunk show and they provided shoes for the Shine and Patina competition and those shoes looked like they could be Edward Green. That shoe was flawless, pattern flawless, last shape flawless, I didn't see all this so it's weird. I don't know what line that was because I thought I was getting the best of the best lines when they sent it to me, but that shoe looked to me like a British made $1,000 shoe. 
So they're doing something right. Guys, if you're listening, make your shoes like the shine shoes you sent for the New York Super Trunk Show because those were tip top. All right. Thank you as always for tuning in. Definitely check out Brooklyn stuff. They make a good shoe. Again, when it comes to design, I'm a stickler for detail on that front. And anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Beautiful snuff suede brogue here. This is a lovely shoe. I really do like it. Uh, and I like to see them trying to improve their uh, craftsmanship detail at a time. Thanks as always. Catch you guys soon. Bye-bye.